Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear for, to my cry for help, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Beloved, you are faithful in all you do for the brothers and sisters, especially for strangers. They have testified to your love before the church. Please help them in a way worthy of God to continue their journey. For they have set out for the sake of the name and are accepting nothing from the pagans. Therefore, we ought to support such persons, so that we may be co-workers in the truth. The Word of the Lord. Amen. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth, the upright generation shall be blessed. Amen. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. Be gracious and merciful and just. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in, in everlasting remembrance. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. 
Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones, who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise So for those that might be watching at home, uh, just to know that we've got a whole number of people here present who are here for the Catechetical Institute today, uh, for their, one of their in-person training days. Did you listen uh, to that, that little verse spoken during the Alleluia? God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. To possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so one of the definitions that you can present about glory, when you think of glorious moments, you're thinking of this moment of kind of a supreme excellence. Did it really just happen that sort of perfect way, that best possible way that it could have done? the most glorious version of Thanksgiving meal. Was it really that good? I think it was. <laughs> you know, uh, the moment that is most fresh in my mind is the, uh, the Stefan Diggs catch, the Minneapolis miracle of the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, so if, if you might not be a football fan, but it, it was seemingly an impossible moment to win the game. Uh, for the Vikings a couple of years ago in the playoffs. And they threw the ball to him, and he managed, as he caught it, to turn in a particular way that the defender that was with him fell to the side. And he had a clear path to the end zone. And his whole job was just to get the ball and get out of bounds to save as much time as possible. So he caught it, he turned, no time left, and he runs and makes it to the end zone. And the whole, it seemed like the whole universe just was in harmony in this moment. You know, you're like, what? <laughs> so, it's this moment of extreme glory, this moment of perfection in things, the excellence. Now, in the last number of weeks, I've been preaching about God getting us ready for divine life in heaven this preparation for divine life. If there are sins in our life that are holding us back from this excellence, God has to weed them out. Part of that is the growth in our personal faith. You study and you learn so as to become a more excellent disciple. You study and you learn to weed out the sins of this world so that we can enjoy divine life. And when you do that, when you get rid of the sins and when you're learning from God, we call this discipleship. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. It's what discipleship is all about. Becoming healthy, holy, smart in the Lord to the best of our capacity. Becoming the best version of ourselves. This is the mission of Jesus, to bring all souls to himself, that none would be lost. And every soul that he brings to himself, he wishes to perfect like gold in the furnace, which is heated, melts, the impurities rise to the top, and the impurities are skimmed away, and the gold is more refined. And each time it's heated in the fire again and again, it becomes more and more purified. That's our souls. That's what the Lord is wanting to do with us. Beloved, you are faithful in all you do for the brothers and sisters, especially for strangers. They have testified to your love before the church. Please help them in a way worthy of God to continue their journey. So we learn all of this stuff just so I get excellent. No, <laughs> so that you can drag as many souls along with you as you can as well. 
we learn so as to teach others. We become disciples ourselves for the sake of the mission of Jesus Christ, that more also can be brought along with him. Therefore, we ought to support one another so that we may be co-workers in the truth. You know, one of the... Um, anybody heard of St. Albertus Magnus? Okay, yeah, of course, unless you're going to know, because we both went to St. Thomas. We both know this. Okay, good. St. Albertus Magnus, one of the great teachers of, I think, the 13th century, 12th, 12th 13th century time period, he uh, was one of the fathers of sort of uh, modern science as we know it, of, of uh, learning about the world around us, kind of scientific processes, and uh, oh, I'm losing all the words that I want to be able to say. Nonetheless, a great educator. Do you know what one of the greatest things that he brought about as a saint was? Someone holier than himself someone smarter than himself. St. Thomas Aquinas. Do that. Try to be a saint who makes someone else holier than you, greater than you. Have it be the case that your legacy that you leave behind is a trail of saints People who learn how to pray better because you learned how to pray and you passed it on to them. People who know more about Jesus because you took everything that you knew and you passed it on to them. This is the process of discipleship. Giving the opportunity for God's grace to flow through us to another generation who will learn more, gain more, benefit more from God's grace than we did. That, I should be, that others should become holier than I as, uh, though I may grow as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire. This is the path of humility. This is the path that Jesus calls us to as disciples to bring about the kingdom of his excellence and his glory. Stand now and bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. We pray for all Christians throughout the world that our lives might exemplify the excellence of Jesus as sins are weeded out and reconciled with God and people are able to see God's love through us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all families, pray for schools and places of formation, universities, colleges. Pray for the development of students and disciples in all walks of life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who need healing of any kind. Pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19, those who are healthcare workers, doctors and surgeons, nurses. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who serve in any way, those who offer their lives for the benefit of others. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died and gone before us in faith. We pray for the next person from our community whom the Lord will call to himself. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would hear all of these prayers. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.